The tussle taking place between the Nigerian government and the Process and Industrial Development Limited continues as the UK firm has stated that Nigeria will not be able to file an appeal in respect of the $9.6 billion arbitrary award until the federal government pays it a $250,000 cost awarded. How did we get ourselves into this situation? And more importantly, how do we get ourselves out of it? Joining me still in the studio, Remod Nkanebe, legal practitioner. Thank you very much. Thank you. And of course, Ugochuku Ikako, political analyst. Always a pleasure to have you both stay uh, this long in the conversation. Thank you. Okay, $200 million um, dollars on one hand. $250 million. On the other hand, that's about $450 million. Yeah, $250,000 on one hand. Yes, and 200, 200 And then this is minus all the Urushirishi on the yeah, side of it. it. Yes. yes? Yes. Can you share more light on this? Let's just understand it first before we start talking. Okay. Um, well, the facts are already in the public domain. Uh, Nigeria has a, an arbitral award against it in the British court to the tune of $9.6 billion. Now, um, P and ID are saying that the award should be enforced. And how do we enforce it? Is it, is it, pay, it is paid in cash or they proceed against Nigerians at assets, both at home and abroad, right? But the government is saying that, no, you, we, you can't enforce this award because um, these, uh, the whole process in court in the arbitral tribunal was, um, was overtaken by some, there has elements of fraud. And to that extent, we are going to protest that decision. So there have been this back and forth, but a couple of days ago, uh, Nigeria was lucky. Uh, the, the justice said, okay, uh, you can now, uh, not the word appeal. I, I've, I've been hearing the word appeal, appeal, appeal in the media. I, I think with respect, it is wrong. In arbitral proceedings, it is set aside. While in typical, otherwise courts litigation, it is appeal. You cannot appeal against a finding of an arbitral tribunal. You can only ask that its decisions be set aside upon a very narrow compact, you get? And one of it is that if the process has elements of fraud, so Nigeria's go Nigerian government is, tying, uh, is seeking for the award to be set aside because of these elements of fraud. And um, the, 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 the court has said, okay, before you can take up with the process of uh, getting this judgment or award set aside, Pay two fifty thousand dollars to P and ID, and just just some kind of um, some kind of costs. We have it every day in court. If because we, if you don't do this, you you pay the other party some cost, and then you have to deposit two hundred million dollars as security, as security, for just that. in case you go up there and the court said no, go and comply with that court order. So you have to pay additional $200 million for failure to comply with what ordinarily you should have done. But you felt you have something uh, you could get around it. And then you go in there and it still fails. So it becomes a kind of a double, a double, a double punishment. For us. Yes. 14 days, 60 days. Can we meet the target? See, uh, before talking about the target, we are here because we have what I call the anyhowness mentality of the Nigerian government. And that is what got us into this trouble. Okay, right? we know we're already in trouble. Yeah, that's what we, have a, we have a window of an opportunity to get out of it. Sure. So that's why we're looking and, at it now. We see, have, can we meet? I don't think. I'm a political analyst. Right? <laughs> I don't see things from the legal perspective. I see things the way it is, sometimes black and white and in gray. The way it is right now, right? the reason, if this was in a Nigerian court, the Nigerian government would have gotten away. And it's good that this thing is happening to us on a global stage. So they cannot come and do it the anyhowness I mentioned about in a British court. It's not possible. The laws and the rest of them that are in the UK, they will not allow you. So they will not get away with it. That is the only, that's the truth, right? Because if it is Nigeria, they would have done their whole, you know how they do it, and find a way to get it. Look at what's happening to the Suki and the rest of it. That was what we were talking about. Is the anyhowness. They but can we meet this time? We see. We must meet this time. That is on my own because it's good. All right? See, I feel it's good for us to be punished as a country. It's, it's painful because we are being punished. Our, our money that's supposed to be used to do some other things is going is will be spent on some other things that is not supposed to be spent because the people that are supposed to do the right thing are not doing it. The time they, they gave this judgment, the Nigeria did not have an AG. Nobody was presenting us there. And it shows the failure of government. And that happened. And now we're going to we're, we're not doing uh, what they call a fire brigade approach. To try to mitigate this this issue that we could have we could have we could have handled 
from the very beginning. There, there's, this, there's this comment by Malami um, after the ruling uh, where he inferred that, you know, uh, it's like a window. Um, this um, few days that's been given, it's like a window for them to explore uh, for the, you know, actions to be taken. Does it, does he mean? I mean, from a layman's point yes. of view, that there's a way we could wriggle out of not paying this money that has been asked that we pay. Well, uh, uh, you mean the two hundred? The two hundred and the two fifty. Okay. Is there a way we can get around that? Is it possible at all? Well, I think the only way I could see that we get around it is to apply back to that court and plead that the sum we are being asked to pay to be reduced. You see, the justice process is a very lenient and accommodating process. You understand? It's a very accommodating process. And it, it looks at parties, not because, oh, this is a country, it has the money. No, it is not how it works. If upon a strong reasons, a feed of its evidence, we say because of this, because of this, because of this, yes, we are going to pay, but we think the sum is too much. Your lordships could exercise the discretion in our favor to reduce it, say, 100 million, 50 million, and all of that. If it's about payment, they are going to pay. But to the tune of it, I think they have a way to get it down. Because when you look, when you weigh it against $9.6 billion, it is safer for us to pay and then see if how we could get around this substantive uh, amount. OK, you want to add but, but I think for, for me, for me, what, what, I, what, what I, I want them to do is that, I don't know whether the court will allow it, but if, if the court will allow it, there's a person who can have a backroom channel with the PID guys and see what they can sort this thing out. Right? Yeah, but they said the point of, that there's no negotiation window at the moment. But, but like, the like, PID said they are not negotiating, Nigeria said they are not because negotiating. Because the government, it, the government, we are the ones that should make the moves for, for that, okay. that talk. But we, have not, no. we, have, we haven't taken those steps. They are the ones with the longer end of the stick. They shouldn't quote to, or we should quote to them. Because an arbitral award is a binding decision. Talking of quote to them, the federal government, before they went to the court again to appeal, or should I say look for alternative yeah. means to resolve this issue, they were in the media saying a lot of things about PNID, for instance, that all the entire contract was fraudulent, PNID all, was all a fraud, uh, um, infested um, a company, you know, mm -hmm. all that kind of strong language. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. PNID is gloating. Mm -hmm. They are saying that in the case where the courts, came, when, where the government came to, you know, ask for for the courts to set aside the judgment that was given or maybe appeal it, mm. they didn't bring up the issue of fraud. Whereas, when an Abuja court ruled, um, I think um, September 19, yes. for the forfeiture of uh, yes. PNID's property, yes. Malami said that they will use that as part of their you yeah, know, yeah, arsenal to, to the, yes, to go and the, defend yeah. Nigeria. So what happened to that? I mean, does PID have a point here, gloating? I oh. think, I think with respect to the AGF, they do. Because I don't think, if you understand how arbitration works, it's a whole new layer of dispute resolution that is founded on the mutual agreement of parties. We agreed with P and ID that let us do this contract and we are going to be bound in the event of dispute we submit to an arbitral panel and we are going to be bound by their findings. Now we submitted, if we had not submitted to the jurisdiction of the, of the tribunal, it would have been a different kettle of fish. But we participated in that proceedings and that judgment was, that award was rendered against us. Now what we are battling in court now, let us not mix it, is to set aside, is to withhold enforcement and not the substantive amount can only be set aside upon very strong evidence of fraud or collusion on the part of the tribunal and, let's say, uh, officers and directors of PNID. Whether they are being confiscated in Nigeria and found, they are outside what was decided by the arbitral tribunal. The contract upon which the tribunal um, uh, pronounced upon, it is only when it is found to be fraudulent that the case of fraud might arise. If they have, if in their sister and or other uh, businesses, they are found fraudulent, it is a different thing entirely. But as per that contract that led to this award, you have to tie that fraud to it to succeed. I, I think that just takes away the wind from my sail. I was going to ask you a question still um, on that, but I'm, I'm going to move on now and okay. go to uh, the information minister, Lai Mohammed. He said the entire that the entire arbitration decision and judgment debt 
would be set aside. He's optimistic that this would happen. Are you? He's a noise maker. He's a noise maker that has no basis. What do you say? Has no basis in legal, in legal, uh, in legal. Yeah, but, but I mean, uh, from what we have so far, the, we have that, that, a team that, of Nigerian that, special hands there in the UK trying to sort this. He's a, he's a, he's a PR, he's a PR person that is failing to do his job. That, under, that doesn't understand what it takes to do PR because he's failing to do it. Right? He's not even communicating what is happening from the court. He's not, he's not, he's not seeing it the way it's supposed to be. He's, he's not distilling that information down, right? Like he rightly said. Is an arbitration issue. There is review. There is, there is a window. There is a window of opening. Okay, what is Nigeria government doing? That is what we're supposed to be hearing now from the Nigeria government. What is is the, the AG and his team that that currently in UK? What are they doing? Have is is, is, is there a possibility that they're going to make make that payment? That is what we're supposed to hear. Not not what he thinks. We we do pay him to ask him what he thinks. So I paid him to do his job as 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 a minister of information. So is it now a crime to be optimistic, Mr. Ogochuku? Is it for you to be optimistic? Hope is not a strategy. There's no, there's no way in this world. I hope it's a strategy. If you hope, you hope you go, you go to bed hungry. If you don't plan to go and get food or cook, so it's not, a, it's not a strategy. If he wants to be optimistic, that is his personal business. We didn't pay him to be optimistic. We paid him to do his job as minister of information to inform the country correctly. And that's why we pay taxes, and that's why he collects his money in Abuja. Has a house in Abuja. He travels first class. So for him, what he's saying does not have any base. What we need to know as, as a country, as a people, right now is that what is the AG and his team doing currently in UK? How can he translate that information so that Nigerians, both in New Pay, uh, Ibo, I also you back and understand what our AG is trying, what they are trying to do because is it, it's our country, it's our money. We need to know what is happening. So he's not doing that. Being optimistic does not help anybody. Okay, Nigeria is moving to extradite the founder, uh, the the son of the founder of the uh, the PNID, and the co-founder to Nigeria to answer to um, you know conviction or cases of fraud and tax evasion and corruption and the likes. Do you see that amounting to anything, really? Uh, do you see them being extradited to this country, or is just, uh, to borrow his word, maybe a media thing? Well, from legal perspective, I would see that as a different transaction entirely. Cost of action turn on the particular transaction. A company might be, uh, might be fraudulent in transaction A and not be in transaction B. It shouldn't rub off. The illegality in this transaction should not rub off on in this one. Okay. So if they're going to extradite all the people, all the shareholders of the company to maybe, it will serve a different purpose, but it will not rub off on that award, except they, they have a way to tie the illegality or the fraud to the circumstance of that contract and the process of the arbitration. Those are the very few uh, narrow compact. Yeah, does does, does the ruling fraud. in this country have any effect on the PNID's uh, international status, or it's just restricted no, to it is, their it's, operation? It's a Nigeria yeah. subsidiary that was that was um, convicted. PNID Nigeria Limited, not the not the uh, the, the 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 one in the, uh, the Irish one. Okay, uh, before we, we move on, I would like to um, seek still on that. Um, court ruling. The yes. lawyer to one of a former director um, in that uh, um, company uh, is said to have collected money illegally. That's about $20,000. Uh, and uh, the lawyer, what I want to draw your attention to is what um, his lawyer, her lawyer rather, yes. uh, said. I'm talking about uh, Mrs. Grace Tiger. Okay. Um, the lawyer denied and said, how could they have been a bribe to facilitate the contract that was done in 2010 and now get paid in 2018 or 19? I don't know if you're familiar with that. I, I really needed to clear that up. Well, I'm not familiar with that, with that particular development. But even if, um, you see, the law allows for people to facilitate contracts. That is a, the law allows for that. If you feel you have people in some places, you have an MOU with a, a company trying to bid for contract. It's okay, I'll help you get this contract and then you give me certain cuts. There is no illegality in that. So if there is a relationship they had with PNID, I don't think that will fall within fraud. Okay. I don't think it will fall within fraud. Final thoughts. Well final thought for me, I, I just hope that the AG and his team understand what they're doing over there in the UK. There's, there's there's a lot that is at stake here. There's a lot that is at stake here. You, you, don't, you don't want a company to start seizing Nigeria assets all over the world or all over UK. 
it doesn't do us good. We don't have a lot of good PR as a country at the moment. And we don't want to add that to our troubles. So don't open up, open up a gate that companies will now start flooding into Nigeria, uh, find a way things will go wrong and go abroad and claim, and claim damages. So I hope that something will be done. Uh, in the interest of the country, uh, in, in, in our own interest as a country, if something could be done, it could be done right. And if there's, a way, there's a way the Lord permits for them to have uh, a way that they could reach out to PR uh, P and ID to see whether that there's a room for negotiation and room so that they can cut, it, cut the money down, pay, the, pay, pay something not too much because the, the money for me, in my opinion, is too much. But for whatever they like, Mohammed and the rest of them are saying, we shouldn't pay them any attention. They are inconsequential at this point. We should listen to what the AG and his team are saying and see how we can get out you of this. You still don't seem to have much faith in Malami himself I as don't, well. Because, so. because he's... <laughs> what because do we listen to from your perspective? But, but we see, at this point, we are stuck with Malami, so we're just going to go with him. It's, it's that bad. And your final thoughts, well, for me, uh, I, will share the, I share the optimism of the of Lai Mohammed, and uh, like I pointed out, they have a way around it legally, which is um, trying to tie this fraud to the process of the arbitration or to the contract itself. If they have a way to get that, then we'll be, we'll be home and dry. But if they don't, we're in trouble. Unfortunately. <laughs> thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming thank, on the program. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break for a plus a report. And when we return, I'll be giving my take to stay with us. Efforts to improve on crime prevention take center stage in Abuja as the Nigerian police force receives training on the provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015. The training, which was organized by the Clean Foundation in Abuja, is aimed at improving adherence to the human rights of suspects, improving conditions of arrest and detention of alleged criminals, speedy dispensation of justice for Nigerians, and improvement of Nigeria's criminal justice system to be in tandem with the international community. It's to uh, ensure that uh, the Nigerian police force, who are the duty bearers in terms of uh, protection of uh, um, citizens and maintenance of law and order, are abreast of, of, of uh, this Administration of Criminal Justice Act um, that was passed in 2015 and has also been replicated in about 26 states of the Federation. Um, the act of policing is not a, a day business, it's a continuous process, so it's important that we engage them continuously uh, on the tools they use and also on issues that border on human rights and the rights of individuals, whether they are accused persons, whether they are suspects, um, whether they are already in court. So the Administration of Criminal Justice Act um, deals with the rights and, 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 and privileges, if you can call it, of individuals um, who have been accused of crime. Of course, you know that the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria states clearly that you are innocent until proven guilty. So whether you are arrested, whether you are in detention, whether you are in police custody, there are rights, inalienable rights, that the Constitution has given to you. So, and the procedure of taking somebody to court, the procedure of taking statements, um, how to um, interrogate a suspect, um, the law makes provisions for most of these issues. Aja has come to stay the way it is, and with what is going to be imparted on the police officers who have come here, they are going to cascade it into our other colleagues in the zonal and state commands. Because where there's no knowledge about a procedure, then they are bound to the problems. So with the knowledge they're going to gain here, added to what they already know about the Aja, it will now be a functional knowledge which will enlarge their capacities, their capabilities, and it will also enhance the overall police service delivery. Because as you know, the Nigerian police is principally and fundamentally the gatekeeper of the criminal justice environment. This training is coming up in uh, line with um, the police reforms program because um, we are trying to adjust our operations to meet the present day, um, you know, contemporary time. So the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, like you know, is a novel law that has brought together the CPA and the CPC, that's the North and the South, the Penal and the Criminal Codes. 
and um, have addressed issues where we had clogs in the wheel of criminal justice. And um, so we are trying to see how we can bring our men to speed, to see the new provisions and what needs to be done away with, and how to go about doing things the new way, so that um, we can meet up. All pointers indicate Shaware might continue to remain in detention in spite of the gallant efforts of his legal team. But like a good Nigerian, I pray I'm wrong. I will definitely celebrate being wrong in this instance. Its continued detention, however, puts the Buhari-led federal government in an extremely poor light. Human Rights Watch agrees with me on this, that the government's action is indicative of a growing intention to shut down dissent. It further darkens our human rights records. Let me reiterate what I said earlier this week. It is pertinent that the government reconsider her strategy in this matter. They risk, or rather, they are already by their action solidifying Showare's growing national hero status. And that is our package tonight. Thank you for watching. Do remember to follow us on all our social media platforms and share your reflections on our programs. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, have yourself a lovely weekend.